Hello, in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about Blender if you have used it for the first time. I mean, if you have not used it for the first time and this is your first time using it, then yeah, you're going to come into Blender and be like, how does this compare to Maya or Max or Cinema, anything that you've used in terms of 3D applications. So uh, by default, you've got the, the grey cube, the famous grey cube that Blender uh, gives you and you can just select that and delete that. You also have a camera, you can delete that and you have a, a light. You can delete all these, you can also uh, get it to um, start a new project and if you say general, all of those will come back. You can just select them all and delete them if you don't want them there. Uh, the camera is useful, the cube is useful and the light is useful. Um, that's why it gives you those. It's assuming this will be your start point and then generally speaking, yeah, you're going to have to want some sort of object to look at and move around. So I'm using the industry compatible setup, which when you first start Blender, you can tell it that you want industry compatible. Now to get that after the fact, you go to preferences and you go to uh, input um, and you can see there's some options there or navigation. There's some options there and key map. Key map is the one that you want. Now it's quite easy to assume it's based on input or navigation, but it's actually key map. And it's here that you're going to choose industry compatible. If you're an old Blender user, you might like Blender's setup. So industry compatible, left click is select, not right click, which is really weird. I don't know why they assumed you would want to right click something to select it. Um, Maybe that's just a habit that's came from some other UI that the creator used to use and is developed from there. But left click or drag uh, to touch something is the way to select something. And now you can sort of jump into edit mode with pressing the number one, very much like 3ds Max. So if you press one, it's basically giving you the vertex mode. W will give you the ability to move. Q comes out of that to go back to a select mode. So Q, W, E and R all do those industry compatible things. So that is the one major thing that Blender really needed to um, make it more like other software today. So as you can see, I'm just going to select a few points here and then I'm going to scale those. So I basically pressed R to get the scale key. E is the rotate key. And W is the move key. So that is basically that. Now you can model anything like this, move things around and stuff like that um, and start to model things uh, to extrude a face. You can press or click here, uh, but as you can see, you can press um, any of these numbers. So one, two or three, one, two or three is basically going to give you, so as you see, like it, like it goes one, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? These are different options, but the reason for two and three not being there is because one is verts, two is edges, and three is faces. So you can choose a face and you can right click and it might give you some options there, uh, like extrude faces, and that just becomes extrude mode. Um, but now it goes straight back to move mode. So you might want um, a shortcut key on that. I'm not really familiar with shortcut keys in Blender. Uh, you can try some things and there might be, oh, there we go. I think I just did it by accident. So it's control and E uh, and I can just undo that. So I choose a face control E. In fact, it's already in that mode. You can see this little pin coming from it. So this, it's now in some sort of extrude mode until I press Q, but you can also see that that icon there lit up, extrude along normals. If you drop that down, if you hold it down, it actually gives you some options. Extrude manifold, extrude along normals, uh, extrude individual, extrude to cursor, all cool things that you might want to mess around with. I don't know what that does. Um, Control Z is undo, so that's good. It's not some other weird thing like U or something. Um, so we'll choose some faces here and we we'll choose this one and see what it does. It looks like it's insetting, so famous inset and Control E jumps to the extrude, just make sure you go back to the extrude region or whatever you want. And you can start to make something. 
Um, so the typical workflow for something hard surface is to use uh, like a sub subdivision or uh, tessellate, tessellation, not tessellation, um, turbo smooth is Max's version. Subdivision is the sort of ZBrush terminology. Subdivide is the one I think they want. So if you choose your mesh and you go to this little spanner here, it's kind of like your modifiers and you can choose a subdivision surface, I think. Yep, so generate subdivision surface. Maybe, oops, I clicked the wrong thing. Triangulate is also handy, subdivision surface. So you see, and the cool thing about this is it gives you a kind of ghosted version of the low poly. And then you can see there's no edge support, so it's just subdivided and shrunk stuff. Um, maybe there's some options here. Use creases, use custom normals, boundary, keep corners, see if any of these make any changes. Mm, quality, not really. Oh, I did something. All right, so it's good to mess around with these and see what you get. So render's gonna be two times subdivision and this is gonna be the number of times that it's subdivided so we get even more geometry added to that. So if I say four, it starts to look nice and rounded. But really, I'm just gonna get rid of that and I'm gonna think about uh, the edge loops and things. Now in Max, what you can do is you can add like an edit poly on top of the edit poly stack, which is nice for making changes. Now, I don't know if you can do that here. If someone uses Blender and they can tell me of something that does that, like a kind of, you know, edit whatever layer that lets you do stuff, uh, build, no idea. It's like a lot of these I don't really know. So I'm definitely as new as you guys when it comes to Blender, but all you want to do really is um, you'll have your low poly and what I like to do is just duplicate the, the mesh. So you can do control D I think. Uh, let's make sure you have it selected in object mode. So go back to object mode or press four, control D that's now duplicated it. We don't want to move it. So we just press escape because as soon as you do control D it kind of grabs it and you're moving it around in some sort of screen space. All you just do is press escape and it does keep it there. So I'll hide the low poly and now I've got a high poly one and then I can go to work on that. And what I'll do is I'll press four, uh, one, sorry, to go into the edit, edit points mode, but I'll just do two to edit edges, just in case I want to move some edges around. It doesn't really matter. What I want to start doing is adding these edge loops. So I'm just going to say, uh, oh, this one above it, so loop cut loop cut right and then I just start to click and drag these in and these are going to support the edges so that when you do the subdivide it kind of tries to keep the shape now this is a little bit of an art in itself and it takes a few a few goes to get used to how it's going to deform the mesh and there's sort of pros and cons to it and little nuances that you need to get used to um, especially when your mesh is like all combined as one and you want it all watertight you start to get pinching in areas you don't really want and you have to figure out where to collapse these edges so that you only have one loop you know because you're making you're making support where you might not want it or need it uh, when you start just willy-nilly adding loops everywhere so I'm just going to bring a few of these in to show you kind of the, the first train of thought of this just to bring them Wee bit close to the edge, like here and here. Uh, I've supported most edges. Let's just do a support at the bottom. So it's just a way of like holding the shape when I put these extra loops near the edge. And now I'm going to add the modifier um, subdivision surface, and you can see it's held the shape much better. I'll do like two levels of subdiv. Uh, and one thing that you see, it's still using the faceted smoothing. So I'm just going to press Q to come out of that. Um, four to come back to the object. And you can see the, the faceted like smoothing, like kind of like what ZBrush does by default. The good thing about 3D applications such as Max Maya or Blender is you can just go to the uh, object and shade smooth. And that will fix the normals so that they are kind of nicely averaged out and not their own individual little face normals. Okay, but so the issues 
that you get from that is like pinching in areas like here here because we've added support and uh, it's not perfect for all of this shape so I can turn that off let's just press the let's see render I think it's this one yeah it kind of toggles it so the little screen will toggle it temporarily and I can go back to the face mode and think about okay maybe I want a loop down here and then you have to think about okay maybe I could cut through this and see what happens so there's the the knife tool and if I go from point to point you can see the little squares kind of appear as well which is nice and just press enter and that commits that and you start to like make sure these cuts go the way you want them to now this isn't the best practice that I'm using I would likely have um, separated these objects so that it's easier um, to just round this one and have this have its own sort of loops and things like that. But because they're connected and they're going to completely different directions, it's really difficult. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of one way around it. And then you know you can you can figure out how those normals should work, or you can make certain verts collapse together. But that's kind of a, a very basic start to things. Um, there's still loads to cover, like the UVs, if you're making a character, and uh, you have to UV unwrap it so that you can texture it, and so on and so forth, but that's a bit more kind of in-depth. But hopefully this gets you started. Um, the main keys that I've been using here is Q, W, E, R, and Alt with the, uh, the left mouse button to rotate round, Alt and right mouse button to pan in and, in and out, Alt and middle mouse button to pan around, so this is kind of what you're used to with Maya or Max. And uh, I actually use the Wacom tablet and pen for this because I find it's less um, RSI with that. Um, but yeah, this is kind of futuristic looking toilet seat or something. Who knows? Uh, an alternative world toilet. State of the art. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, yeah, it'd be good to see you know how far you get with this method. Uh, you know, subdividing, a little bit of edge holding, and you know, keep it about two or three levels. Don't go crazy with it. You'll kind of crash out uh, Blender because you're adding so much geometry that you don't really see. And I think you can actually collapse this stack as well um, to basically become the mesh again. Uh, I think it's apply. There's some sort of button that says apply and uh, I forget where it is. There's a button that says apply, it becomes part of the, the mesh, and that's it done. So, if anybody can tell me where that is, that would be great. Otherwise, I'm just pressing things trying to find it. Uh, there, I mean, it is there, that apply button, but I've no idea why it's not lit up. Maybe if I come out of the edit mode. There we go. So I'll click apply now and that's now, uh, that modifier is now the mesh. So if I go into the wireframe, you can see lots of loops and lots of geometry that doesn't matter because it doesn't really change the shape that much in the, you know, these flat areas, but it does still have a job here. But horrible thing with that is all this kind of pinching and stuff that you will have to learn to deal with uh, if you're making things like cars or weapons and uh, yeah, good idea is to split these into sort of sub parts and just you know merge them together a bit, like cut them, let them cut through each other. Uh, it's not all bad because uh, at the end of the day, you can you can basically you know put little details there with the texture, and when you're texturing it, add little fake normal bumps, and that will cover a lot of this. But yeah, definitely don't take this as the uh, the truth or the gospel truth of how to do things. This is just a base intro to Blender and not much else. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it helps you and good luck with your pathway to become the 3D modeler through the Blender type of uh, application. And good luck. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.